The biomechanical alien classified as Xenomorph XX121 by Weyland Yutani has long been thought of as an ancient creature. When the Nostromo crew first discovered the space jockey derelict, Captain Dallas would note that the corpse looked like it had been that way for a long time, and that it appeared to have fossilized, a process that on Earth takes at least 10,000 years. Even so, the true age of the Xenomorphs would be put into question when the lost missions of Prometheus and Covenant were finally examined, and an alien called the Deacon or Protomorph was found, with proto meaning first or earliest form of. But now Alien Romulus is on the way, a film seated in between Alien and Aliens, and one of the leaks from it, in my opinion, gives weight to the idea that Xenomorphs are not only far older than the Deacons, but they are likely the source of their creation. Dan O'Bannon, who co-wrote Alien with Ronald Chousset, was a huge fan of the works of H.P. Lovecraft. So much so, he'd later direct The Resurrected, an adaptation of the case of Charles Dexter Ward, and then he'd team up again with Chousset to co-write Bleeders, an adaptation of The Lurking Fear. People often bring up films like It, The Terror from Beyond Space, and Planet of the Vampires as influences for Alien, and they most certainly are yet all of them can trace their roots to Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness, where a group travels to Antarctica and finds fossilized aliens called the Old Ones or the Elder Things, strange creatures that came to Earth a billion years ago that may have created mankind. According to O'Bannon, one especially insightful critic, I wish I remembered who, wrote that Alien evoked the writings of H.P. Lovecraft, but where Lovecraft told of an ancient race of hideous beings menacing the Earth, Alien went to where the Old Ones lived. To their very world of origin. He was right, that was my very thought while writing. That baneful little stormlash planetoid halfway across the galaxy was a fragment of the Old One's homeworld, and the alien a blood relative of the yogg sothoth For those unfamiliar with the yogg sothoth it's part of the Cthulhu mythology and is all-knowing, exists in all dimensions, and is beyond the concepts of time and age. So linking the alien to such creatures would make them incredibly old. The Nostromo mission would be the first recorded encounter with Xenomorph XX121 in the year 2122, while responding to an alien beacon on the moon LV426. However, 29 years earlier, in 2093, the crew of the Lost Prometheus mission would discover the engineers on LV223, an alien race that created mankind whose true origins are unknown. Their technology, though, is inherently alien more appropriately, xenomorphic, making them masters of all things biological and mechanical. They also possess the accelerant, also called the pathogen, which they have used as a tool that can create or destroy life on a planetary scale, one that through experimentation would create the deacons and the neomorphs, while David would employ it to make his praetomorph, an alien that the company originally believed to be Xenomorph XX121, placing David as their creator. Yet closer examination has shown the Pratos and the Xenos to be two separate Plagaris species. All three of the aliens found during the Lost Missions can trace their origins to the Accelerant in one way or another, but there is no evidence to say the same for the Xenomorphs. We can't be sure that the alien in the mural on LV223 is in fact a deacon, though I'd lean that way myself, and without knowing when the mural was made, we don't know for sure if the deacon led to the Xenos. However, if we know how the accelerant was made, we might be able to determine if it predates our aliens. Until recently, this too was a dead end, but then I heard about the leaks from Alien Romulus, specifically the one that says that a form of the accelerant, known as the Prometheus strain, will be reverse engineered from the DNA of Big Chap, the xenomorph from the Nostromo encounter, and it will be used to create other aliens. If the human scientists at the company were able to do this, then the engineers surely could have encountered a Xeno and used it to make their own accelerant. Now I know that it's also possible that the Xenos themselves are made from the Prometheus strain, which is why it can be extracted from them, but I don't think that lines up with the current direction that the franchise is heading in. After all, when asked if the prequel missions and a possible modern creation of the alien is canon to his upcoming Alien series, Noah Hawley said that for him and for a lot of people, this perfect life form, as it was described in the first film, is the product of millions of years of evolution that created this creature that may have existed for a million years out there in space. A quote that realigns the creature from the original film as a depiction of the Elder Things waiting for mankind throughout the eons and unexplored space. Though no evidence of any xenomorphs were found on LV-223, 
There are ties from XX121 to the engineers, with perhaps the most obvious one being their technology, which is theorized to be based on the strain's biomechanical makeup, a feature we see in the massive juggernaut ships and in their bio and pressure suits. Perhaps the engineers encountered the Xenos long ago, and like mankind, they tried to study them, which in the end was far too risky. So they created the accelerant, but it proved to be nearly, if not more, volatile than the creatures themselves. Which explains why they would keep it on a moon far away from any of their colonies. They would even store the active urns in a pattern in their headroom that mimics the Xenomorph Queen and the placement of her ovomorphs. Supposedly this was done to keep the active urns stable, but I also believe that the similarity of positioning was done in reference to the origin of the accelerant. And then we have David's creation, the Praetomorph. He would learn of the ways of the engineers during the time it took for he and Elizabeth Shaw to reach them at Planet 4. And it is here that he learned of their experiments with the aliens, knowledge that he would then apply to his supply of the pathogen along with engineer tissue, the Neomorphs, and Elizabeth Shaw to make the Praetomorph. An alien that is close enough to XX121 that one could wonder if this is what the engineers were trying to recreate. According to the alien role-playing game, the engineers created mankind, the Arcturians, and the Protomorphs, but their true goal was to recreate an alien life form they call the Destroying Angel, a reference to the Dark Horse Aliens comic Aliens Apocalypse, where Xenomorph XX121 is a plague of destroying angels that would sweep through space in regular cycles, extinguishing all life in their path, a primordial filter of sorts for the universe. There was even archaeological evidence that 3.2 billion years ago they had wiped out everything on planet Earth as well as on the Akron derelict and at the space jockey city discovered in the comic. Nearly 2 billion years after the wave had receded, the space jockey giants that built the city had grown out into space and had dominated our galaxy, only for the angels to return and restore balance once more. Aliens Apocalypse was released in 1999 and now Marvel is publishing the Alien comics. Yet they propose a similar setting, where a dying synthetic tells us that when organic species grow arrogant enough to travel the stars, they find it waiting, Prometheus's cleansing fire, referring to both the alien and the pathogen. The fire that keeps the universe clean of parasites like Gabriel Cruz, a man who she believes will help cause the fall of mankind as he was the first to survive an alien implantation when his chestburster was removed by the company, giving them their first specimen of the xenomorph and sealing the fate for all of mankind. To learn more about the Deacons or the mysterious space jockeys, try out one of these videos. Take care and thanks for watching.